All right, homework 22, this is chapter 11. Chapter 11, we only have three kind of problems. The end ones might be a little longer. But first of all, they're going to have us fill in a contingency table based on what the expected frequencies are. So it says, to determine the target audience for a new email package, a computer company surveyed a large sample of potential customers, asking each whether he or she uses email on a regular basis. The company considered a regular basis to be at least three times a week. The data as summarized in the contingency table below were classified by the age of the respondent and the response to the question. The respective observed frequencies are written in the cells of the table. In addition, three of the cells have been left blank beneath the observed frequencies. Fill in the blanks with the frequencies expected if the two variables, email use and age, are independent. Round your answer to two decimal places. So, here they're just going to have us fill in three of them. There are actually eight that we could fill in when we're doing our contingency table. And in order to do what the value is that goes in that table, is you're going to take the row total times the column total and divide that by the total sample size. So, in order to figure out this first one here for under 18, on a regular basis, I'm going to take my row total, which is the 380, times my column total, which is the 303. So, 380 times 303, I'm going to divide it by the total of the sample, which is the 1,000 down there in the corner. And again, you're just going to grab your calculator, take 380 times 303, divide it by 1,000. gives you 115.14. So my answer there, 115.14. And then basically you're going to do the exact same thing for the other two parts. So if I'm going to do this one here, this one here, my row total is 380 times my column total, this time my column total is the 291, divided by 1,000. If you punch that in, you should get 110.58. So this box here, 110.58. And then they're going to have you do a third one. On the third one, now I'm down here for not on a regular basis. I have my row total is 620. Row total 620. My column total, I'm still in the under 18 column, so I have my 303. And I'm dividing it by my total sample size, which is the 1,000 on all of these, since it shouldn't change. So if you punch in 620 times 303 divided by 1,000, you should come up with 187.86. So this box right here, 187.86. So nothing too terrible bad when you're filling in your contingency table. And we're going to do this a bunch through this whole chapter. Row total times the column total divided by your total sample size. So on number two there, it says, Mandrake Falls High School is providing a weekend course in the laboratory techniques to its laboratory students. Of the 200 students enrolled in lab classes at Mandrake, 73 have taken the weekend course. Mandrake is evaluating the course effectiveness by having its lab instructors record harmful lab incidents or accidents, misuse of lab equipment, etc. The contingency table below gives a summary of the data that has been gathered so far. 
for Mandrake's 200 lab students. Each student is classified according to whether or not he has taken the lab technique course and how he has performed in the lab. In the cells of the table are represented the observed frequencies. Note that three of the cells also have blanks. Fill in the frequencies expected if the two variables, status regarding the lab techniques course and laboratory performance are independence. So, if we took the course, we have no accidents, one incident or two or more incidents. 31 here, 27 here, 15 here for a total of 73. Those that didn't take the course, 68 had no incidents, 36 one incident, 27 two incidents, and again, if you took 68 plus 36 plus 27, you'd get this 127. Here, no incidents, 31 plus 68 is my 99, 27 plus 36 is my 63, 15 plus 23 is my 38. So they have all of those numbers in there and they just want you to put in the expected frequency. Expected frequency then, we're going to take our row total times our column total divided by the total sample size. So on the first one, the first blank here, I'm filling in this box right here. My row total is 73. My column total would be 99. Total sample size, the 200. Again, just punch that into your calculator. 73 times 99 divided by 200 should give you 36.14, 36.14. On my next box, my next box is down here in my second column, or my second row, I want to take my row total, 127, times my column total, 99, divided by my sample size, which again is going to be my 200. Just going to grab my calculator, 127 times 99 divided by 200 should give you 62.87. And the third box there we want to fill in. This one here, we're going to take our row total, which is 127 times the column total, which is 63, and again divide by the sample size of 200. And so we should get 40.01. So on number three, doing the same thing. Westminster Financial has released a summary of investor and investment packaging information from the past fiscal year. During this time, Westminster provided a choice among 12 pre-designed investment packages, which it classified into three categories according to riskiness. Risky, moderate to mixed, and conservative. Suppose we're interested in the possible relationship between the age of an investor and the riskiness of the investment package she chooses. The following contingency table gives a summary of information released by Westminster regarding age and riskiness of the investment package for 150 investors. In the cells of the table are the respective observed frequencies and three of the cells also have blanks. Fill in the blanks with the frequencies expected if the two variables riskiness of investment package chosen and age of the investor are independent. So again, we've got our table, they've got them group, risky, moderate to mixed, and conservative, and they also have them by age group, under 35, 35 to 49, and 50 plus. We want to fill in those expected frequencies. So row total times column total divided by 
total I can spell <laughs> sample size. So on the first box here, I'm doing this one, under 35 and risky. My row total, 35. My column total, 49. And the total sample size, 150 investors were surveyed, right? 150. So if we do 35 times our 49 divided by 150 on our calculator, we should come up with 11.43. 11.43. The next one, way over here where we have the one conservative that is under 35. Evidently the under 35s are more risky. So, our row total is 35. Our column total is 31. And sample size, 150. So 35 times 31 divided by 150 gives me 7.23. And my last one over here, at the 50 plus, how many are conservative? So my row total is 55. My column total would be 31 divided by my sample size, 150. So 55 times 31 divided by 150 gives you 11.37. So, here my expected frequencies are what I found. What this really means is if I were going to survey 150 people, I would expect that I would have 11.43 in this category. I actually had 15, but that's what I would expect. Over here, I would have expected to have 7.23, or about 7 people in that quarter category. Down here, I would have expected to have 11.37. I got 11, so I was pretty close on that one. So those are my expected frequencies based on my table.